Hello everyone. Whew, it's such a morning. Oh, I think we are live. Woohoo! Eventually. It's it was 16 minutes. 16 minutes delay. So I'm really sorry about this. You know, uh, this is probably something that will happen time to time when things uh, that are supposed to work stop working exactly in like a few minutes before we tested everything and boom. And uh, uh, I'll be switching manually uh, cameras because the whole idea is to show you a little bit uh, of, uh, you know, shooting, the real shooting. And uh, it was not easy to show it through this camera. I need to set another one and it stopped working. Anyway, uh, glad to see uh, you, glad to know that, whoa, so many people are still waiting, guys. This is, I mean, it, that's truly amazing that uh, you're still here, really. I mean, uh, thank you so much for, for the trust and for, well, spending your time, your valuable time to wait for this. Okay. Uh, yeah, Maya. Yeah, well, I'm always worried. It's, it's you know, the, the feeling is not the best, you know, when, when this happens. Anyway, uh, we have a little bit of, uh, I prepared, well, we're going to shoot this, we're going to try to shoot this watch. Uh, this is very inexpensive, you probably have seen it before. Uh, the watch that has lots of little gemstones are all around. So that's why I call it jewelry, it's it's very glossy watch. And uh, there are many, many ways to to shoot that kind of uh, subject. Uh, I want to show you, I want to show you the very simple way. Something that you can do without, almost without a light, without light modifiers, uh, almost without anything, really, okay? So, it will be cool, hopefully. Uh, the whole idea is to uh, show you that it's all possible and uh, uh, it may be not as sophisticated as with you know, serious stuff, uh, but I think for m many of you it will be quite inspiring, okay? So, okay, hello, hello, morning. <laughs> uh, for somebody it's morning. Vasim, uh, Rinaldo, Sayed, uh, Maya, Sal, well, Herman, well, oh, so many people. Okay. And let me turn on everything that I need to turn on here. Uh, what I can tell you that it will be somewhere in the middle. <laughs> I'm going to tell you uh, a code that will work only for today uh, for any course on 40G. Just, you know, stay with me. Uh, I just want to try this kind of thing when uh, we give some cool discount, uh, which can be actually used on some courses. It will be 50% off. Uh, that you that it will work only for people who watch uh, us online. Then I'm gonna cut it, uh, and uh, you know, in the recording, it won't be there. Uh, sort of cool thing. So just be with me, okay? <laughs> uh, going to start shooting. Going to start shooting. We have everything. And uh, привет, фотограф Гавриков Николай. Привет, Николай. And let's let's talk a little bit about jewelry. Uh, jewelry photography. As on any product photography, uh, we always, well, thinking about, you know, law of reflection and law of refraction when we're shooting glossy things. Jewelry, it's probably the highest glossiest uh, uh, variety of subjects, right? And uh, how we work with jewelry, what I've seen many times. There are, well, there are really great photographers, uh, really great uh, images producing. But talking about mistakes, if we uh, sort of divide them, split them into two uh, largest areas, what I see in many cases, that either gemstones, those little uh, or large uh, gemstones that isn't jewelry, is not lit properly, meaning that they're not reflecting much light and they're darker than the metal sort of, you know, dark spots instead of really bright crystal kind of sparkly spots. That's one of the things, the 
biggest mistake, right, or issue. And another thing is how metal, how glossy metal uh, is looking like when you shoot it. It sometimes it looks like a crap because photographers don't use diffusers or reflectors. Basically, it's like uh, some spotlights. But in many cases, I see nice metal, but it doesn't look glossy. Photographer put so much nice diffusion all around that the metal start looking dull, like a matte. And uh, this is probably the second uh, big issue. Of course, everything can be uh, done uh, with the lighting. Photoshop is like a second, um, second uh, level of adjustments that are fixing the errors uh, which uh, can be applied. But uh, as a photographers, we always need to think about uh, doing the, uh, everything in the camera. And uh, as you may know, if not, <laughs> you need to check. We have courses on 40G, courses for jewelry photographers, uh, all kind of different courses. And uh, right now we have uh, this course. Let me show it to you. Uh, we have this course, which is on sale. Okay, uh, the course is called uh, Diamond Drop Creative Jewelry Photography Course. This is the Probably the simplest, meaning that it's relatively short, not expensive at all, because usually uh, jewelry courses way more expensive. And it's creative. You will see uh, some cool stuff, uh, how not just shoot jewelry, but you know, to do it creatively. But since this pendant, it's beautiful pendant with uh, diamond inside and little diamonds all around and some pearl, you will see all the techniques that we apply on uh, any jewelry photography you'll see on this course. Uh, I'm just kind of sneaking a little bit for you because you may not need to have everything, you know, like to pay $500 to get uh, all the things that you need to know in terms of shooting jewelry photography. And since you're watching, like I said, this for this week is 25% off. If you're going to use the code 0909, 0909, very simple code, it will bring any course to 25% off additionally, meaning on this one it will be 50, okay? This code 000909 will work only for today. So, okay, now I tell everything and uh, let's uh, jump to, we have tethered screen, capture one, okay? We have this watch, again, to show you how this watch look like, you know, let's do this. Okay, it will be a little bit easier. And you know, since I'll be doing it manually, here we go, we're doing it manually. Is it there? Okay, awesome. Let me adjust. It's not as convenient as usual, but I want to see, I mean, I want to show what is going on exactly on the shooting area. The watch is going to be placed in front of the camera on the glossy plexiglass, glossy black plexiglass. And what you see here, it's a live view, okay? It's a live view from the camera. And uh, we're going to focus somewhere in the middle, okay? Uh, so you see the actual, the actual watch. <laughs> Again, guys, uh, this will be a very simple shot. Uh, it will, the, the thing that I show you will work for anyone, uh, for the beginner, because it doesn't need, uh, you don't need to have much of the uh, gear to do this. I'm going to uh, try to use do-it-yourself stuff. However, don't think that it's gonna work for any, any type of uh, jewelry because mostly it will work for watches for anything that is flat, flat, okay? This is the big thing. If it would be a ring, it's not gonna work as well as for the watch. If your watch is, you know, some curved shape, like uh, the uh, glass on the watch is really banded, it's like, you know, spherical, it may not work that well. But if it's flat, and if the gemstones are facing, well, <laughs> the camera, it will work. Okay, so how are we gonna highlight it? I have one light. I have only one light, which will be a spotlight. 
So honeycomb grid here, okay? Guys, I'll be showing you a little bit, then I'll jump to the chat, uh, see what is going on, and then jump back, okay? So one light source. The camera is here, it's a macro lens, okay? Macro lens, uh, meaning that we can shoot relatively close to the subject. What this watch, what it's gonna reflect? Do you know where, just let's try to brainstorm. Again, this is for uh, photographers that just starting this. I want to show as much as possible in terms of uh, how I'm thinking, okay? This is what I try to do on every course, not just show how I do it, but how I'm thinking. Where I need to position the diffuser or whatever, some light, let's say light. Where? Where we will get in reflection on that watch because it's glossy, meaning that we are gonna catch reflection. So if we have cameras here, the watch is here, the reflection, right, will be coming again, low of reflection, angles are equal, and the light should be coming from this area. I hope you, you get in this, right? Not from that area, not from that. You cannot highlight it from this. I mean, you can, but it's not gonna work. Because the light gonna come to the camera from this area just because of that freaking law of reflection that if you don't get it, it'll be really hard to do jewelry or product photography. Okay, you got it. So, if we put a light here, right? We put a light, we just put a light and let's turn it on. Uh, you know, let me do this. I'm gonna uh, open this chart in pop out. So I'll see a little bit what is going on. Okay. Cool. Yes, exactly. It's uh, physics, eight, eight's great. Exactly. But you know, uh, Nikolai and Prokofiev, Prokofiev photo. I, I actually, I surprised how many people having troubles calculating the reflections. Yeah, it's eight's great. Everyone knows it. Everyone uses it all the time when you come to the mirror and do something. They never try to highlight the mirror, they start highlighting themselves. Uh, but when it comes to photography, how much I see, you know, things like, <laughs> so. Okay, so what do we see here? You see the live view, right? You see how the slide, the reflection comes uh, to the watch. And because, because the glass is flat, this is why it's so easy, even that, that spotlight is to either catch reflection on the glass or not to catch it, right? It's very little movement. It's basically a few inches. And in this case, we not catching the reflection. So let me uh, set, let's say, F16 to have a depth of field since we're not going to do focus stacking. Uh, by the way, if no focus stacking is possible for whatever reason, and you're shooting something like this, of course, you may not have the focus all the way. There is no tilt shift lens, it's just a regular lens. What do you do? Well, at least, what do I do? <laughs> I set a focus in the middle, okay? So depth of field, when we close the aperture, will cover both areas. I'm not going to set focus in the frontal area, in the, let's say, in this area. It's so easy to set it there, oh, nice, but no. We'll lose half of the depth of field because it will be covering this area, this is in front of the watch, no reason. So I'm choosing the middle, setting the focus, and let's see if it will work or not. In terms of the focus, okay? Okay, so at least it's something like in a focus. And you see the result. The result is on top. Uh, let me... A little bit reduce this chat. Okay, uh, Sal, uh, I'm gonna talk about discount a little bit later. So, you see what we are getting with this light. It's relatively large compared to the subject. It's uh, several times larger than the subject. The spotlight that we have, it's that big. 
subject is that small. And still, we have some really crappy image you see on top, right? It's just because, again, lower reflection, our glass, our metal, our gemstones, it's the glass gemstones, the watch is $8 watch, beautiful thing to learn photography, you know. <laughs> it reflects area way larger, way larger than this reflector, okay? So we need to cover it. How we do cover? How do we cover it? I hope you know what I'll be doing right now. Let's cover it. Well, let's cover it some creative way. Let's cover it this way, for example. Okay? You see what I did? I just covered the area in, on top of, the, uh, of our subject, on top of the watch. Let me move it a little bit more like this. So, now, uh, let me do this. I'm going to turn off uh, light that is on the ceiling. And uh, going to do this. I'm going to move it. Now you see what happened, right? You see how live view the spot. But now this spot is diffused because it's diffuser. This is savage plastic. And... You may think that, hey, Alex, this is not do it yourself, but you are wrong. This is do, do it myself. It's just a savage plastic on the screen frame. Yes, screen frame, I didn't do it myself. I bought it. But screen frame, it's basically a frame that you can mount the diffuser on. Okay? Definitely, this one is really cool because it has the connector that uh, it goes to the grip head. So it's professional stuff. It's beautiful, can be positioned anyway. But... The whole frame, if it's not collapsible, it costs around $20 in US. Okay, so very inexpensive thing. Okay, let's do a shot. See what is going on? It looks quite different immediately, right? Okay, you see what happens. First, it's darker. Of course, it's uh, a little bit darker, but there is no crazy reflections. It's way smoother. So let's uh, bump up power like one f-stop and let's do a half f-stop. Maybe let's do a two f-stop. Okay, now it's way brighter. And this is what I see sometimes. I see, uh, you know, let's do this. Uh, let me do this since we'll be talking a little bit. What I see, I see that people may be getting some sort of night reflection, nice reflection on the glass. It may be like this, so it's like semi-transparent, clearly showing that there is a glass. We may be getting some nice reflection on the metal, but this is the biggest issue. All the little gemstones, by the way, there is no enough depth of field, right? You see, they blurry. So. We probably move the focusing plane a little bit closer to the bottom, to the front area, to get at least this in the focus, because this is not good. But guys, this is really bad. This is the worst thing to show gemstones. They are dark, and they should be really, really shiny instead. So, what do we do? First, let's find the spot that will create nice things on the metal. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to look at the live view and move the, the light just to show you how it goes. What I like, for example, somewhere here, you see metal around, metal around the watch start being shiny and still the watch, the uh, face is not covered with that big spot. This is not good. This is sort of good, okay? And let's position somewhere here. And again, it's nice on the background. It's sort of nice. Okay. So what do we see? Now let's do the focus, like I said, a little bit. Oops. Uh, focus a little bit closer to the front area. So this is in a focus. And then let's move it somewhere here. And yep. Okay, so 
this is one light source setup. The metal start looking nicer, okay, agree? Oh, let's move it a little bit. By the way, when I move diffuser, you see nothing changes because this is the spot. If spot is still under the diffuser, all this area is dark, so it's not really doing anything. Now, what about those little gemstones? Any idea how to highlight them? We probably need to find the area where those little crystals all around uh, the watch face, they reflecting the, where they reflecting the light, where lights should be to get the reflection. And what I usually do, uh, this is what I show on jewelry courses, I use the flashlight to determine this, to find it. I'll show you in a moment. Uh, let me do this. Uh, uh, let me switch to this. I'm going to answer some of your questions, okay? And we should be good to go. So, uh, Rina saying tin foil as a reflector. Rina, you're talking about adding tin foil somewhere to get the reflection on the little gemstones, right? However, I mean, it may work, but let me ask you, where are you going to put it? If you look at the setup, the light is there. And if you're going to put foil anywhere here, anywhere between our diffuser, between our light and the subject, that foil will just block the light. It's not going to help, it's going to actually reduce the amount of light that watch can reflect because foil is not transparent. Foil can be positioned only on opposite side of the light. If light is here, subject is here, we can put some foil or whatever, some reflector that will bounce the light back to the subject, highlighting from other side. It's, it works perfectly. But in this case, we have light here, subject is here, camera is there. where you can probably position the foil here so it bounces the light from uh, the, through the diffuser or whatever, bounce from the subject back to reflector and back to the subject, but imagine how much light you will lose. You won't see anything. This is what you do. Uh, this is what I do, <laughs> at least. What I do, I get in this light, okay, flashlight. And I start moving this light on top of the diffuser and look on the live view and see something start going on. Well, this is the area where we have glass reflection, but look at those gemstones. They start sort of, you see some light is start going on on the gemstones. So we can try, we can try to highlight this area. Since we highlight in this with the spot, and we can highlight this area. Now, how we can highlight it? We can, well, we need another light. Or we can probably move that light a little bit away, increase brightness, or for example, there is a 20, um, yes, 20 degree honeycomb grid in it. We can remove that grid and it will highlight the whole thing. However, in this case, what will happen? Any ideas? What may happen that you will lose these beautiful dark reflections that really shows the shiny metal? If it will be, this is the mistake that many of you guys may be doing. When you highlight in the diffuser, you kind of learn, oh, there is a diffuser, I can use it. Awesome. You just put lots of light on it, leaving no dark areas on the diffuser, no gradients, and then boom, you will have dual matte metal, which is not good. It may be good for gemstones though, yes, but maybe not for metal. So imagine that I don't have broncolor lights anymore. I'm like, oh, what to do, what to do? Shit, what do you need to do? <laughs> I have $62. So what I did, let's say, I went to Amazon and bought this, again, I'm doing this crazy stuff just for you. I bought this Chinese, Yongnuo, forgive my pronunciation, light. It's $62 speed light. And what it has, it has slave mode, optical slave mode. 
the only thing that we need, optical slave mode. So let's have uh, it set on a full power, just, just for no reason. On the zoom, 100 millimeters, 105 millimeters zoom, and just try to hold it over here, highlighting this area. Let's see what will happen. Let's see what will happen. Okay, you see the difference? Not much, but on a very particular area, this is our gemstones. We catch the reflection only on them, right? With that additional light. So from this to this. And of course, it gets some nice reflection on here, that additional light. And because we're doing it through the diffuser, this is why it looks so nice on the metal. There is some shiny areas. You see the difference, right, between this and this. And this is the light that you may have missing. Maybe you like saying, Alex, I don't have studio lights. I cannot do studio stuff. You have this. Do we have some paper, tracing paper? Plastic, savage plastic, silk, or maybe, well, you probably should have uh, some but larger diffusers like this, right? It's not a diffuser, it's actually, well, this is the little soft box which comes to this. But you understand what I'm talking about, right? With two of those, I just was lazy to put second one instead of brown color. I can use second one like this, uh, just need to trigger it. I can do this picture. Is it perfect picture? No, it's not a perfect picture. It can be done, some work should be done on, the, uh, on this watch. Like, what kind of work? Well, all kind of work can be done. Uh, for example, we can have a piece of paper, position it on this way. Do you see what is going on? Yes? Next to, the, uh, to our watch. Let me put it there. And use this light and do a shot. So it's a piece of paper which I bend, so it's standing on the uh, on our plexiglass. And from this, we got this. What it did? It did some reflection here, a little bit, not much. It highlighted a little bit here, but you see what is happening, right? Now we can use some little reflectors, something to bring uh, shyness to the areas where it's needed. And the whole jewelry photography, the whole product photography, it's all about this, about finding those areas to reflect. And this is why it's cool to use a relatively large diffuser and relatively small light behind it. Not a big softbox, no reason for this. There is no reason to use diffuser and large softbox behind it. Because softbox is already diffuser. The reason to use diffuser is to put a small light, one, then second one, then maybe third one, on different areas on the diffuser. When you work with glossy, of course, if it's not glossy, you don't care, you use just softboxes and it's nice, like people's faces, not a problem. But with glossy metal, uh, this is where you can get really cool reflections, very nice, smooth gradients. Just use a relatively large diffuser and a relatively small light behind it. Okay, S small light compared to the diffuser size. That's what I mean by small. Okay. Uh, let's talk about questions, you guys, your questions. Uh, do I have course for strobe lighting? Yes, exactly. What I have is this, let me show you. We have the course that is for, it's three courses actually, all of them. I'm using this, this from that course, uh, those speed lights. But very inexpensive soft boxes and do it myself, <laughs> diffusers. And uh, here is the course. It's three in one bundle, but basically it's three parts of the course. First part of the theory, okay, where I am explaining, uh, let me jump to this one, where I am explaining 
that low reflection, you know, on actual examples, showing you all kinds of things. Then another one is practical examples, where I'm actually shooting everything. Uh, here are the images. Uh, let me go through them. So it was a wide shot with creative background. It was all in camera. Then this shot, again, only those guys. Then this shot, then that shot, this. And this, all different types, uh, textured, glossy, non-glossy, somewhere in between, um, and you know, metal, glass, all with very simple lighting. This is second course, and uh, this course is a post-production. Same images, but all the Photoshop stuff. That's Jenny Larione is teaching, and uh, it's uh, sold as a bundle. Uh, we can do maybe a little bit more uh, shooting, but. Honestly, I don't think that uh, much should be done. Now, when you start tweaking and uh, you know, finishing the lighting for this shot, the whole idea is to have enough light to highlight all these little gemstones. They should be sparkly. They should be brighter than the metal. It's a very important thing that gemstones should be brighter than surrounding metal. If it's darker, it's not going to work. On jewelry, yes, metal is really shiny. It's polished metal, but the crystals, the even more shinier. You remember what uh, gives that, you know, diamonds? It's so, it creates so much, many sparkles on the real life when it's artificial lighting, especially LED lighting, you know, when whatever, on the demo stand. But it's not a metal. So crystals should be brighter. Uh, here, for example, we can go and, uh, you know, adjust uh, on this shot what we actually can give you a little bit of uh, Photoshop thing, you know. Yeah, let's get back here. Uh, a little bit of Photoshop. What we do in Photoshop, this is Capture One. This is not good for photo editing. However, uh, there is a masking tool. So if I go and create a masking layer and uh, choose, why my mouse is not working? Anyone knows? And uh, choose the size of that brush. Let's say it's like this. And then I create a uh, mask with that brush. You see what I'm doing? Yes, you see. Okay. Ah. Come on. On a touchpad without anything. Anyway, you do this mask. And then you can apply, um, let's say we can apply a little bit more brightness. You see what is going on? I can put a lot of brightness. We didn't need too, too much. A little bit more brightness, a little bit more contrast. OK? Uh, actually, let me put, instead of brightness, just, well, not exposure, but brightness. A little bit more contrast. Uh, we can add some sharpening. OK? Uh, we can add maybe some clarity to bring it brighter. So this is what happens. You see this area that I uh, developed? It's, of course, it, you should select each little gemstone separately. This is what we have on jewelry courses. So Jenny can explain this technique uh, really well. But the whole idea is that you're making them brighter, more contrast, and uh, sharper than anything else. And, uh, well, it looks awesome. This is just the best thing. Get the jewelry course, you will know it. Okie dokie. Now, answers to your questions. Answers to your questions. <clears throat> Lots of questions. Uh, Rina saying less contrast, but super tip. Probably less contrast, you're talking about uh, closing uh, down aperture. Yes, there is drawbacks for this, but I can tell you that it works. There are many. Uh, ways to shoot single shot without uh, focus stacking, making happy your clients uh, because the image that you're getting is uh, good for them. Good enough. In commercial photography, it's not an art, right? You need to deliver to make them happy. Sometimes focus stacking is overkill. And contrast, lose of contrast, lose of sharpness uh, when you close down aperture on a good lens, it's actually not that bad can be gained back at some point in Photoshop, right? So there is always area where you still can do 
one single shot without focus stacking. Okay. Uh, any tips if you have only continuous light? Ness is asking. Ness, this light is as good as continuous light. If I would use this light, okay, this light, to do exactly the same, put one light, one flashlight where I have burn color now, and put another one where I had this one, it will be exactly the same thing. I don't know, Ness, did you see or not? Uh, we have that course, uh, Light Painting in Jewelry Photography. It was released uh, about a month ago. I have to show, guys. I don't know. It's continuous light. And it's actually not just continuous light. It's a single light. One light. Well, it was larger. And all this. This is one light. Multiple exposures, though. This is one light, OK? This is one light. Continuous LED light. There is a, actually a free uh, lesson you can watch uh, on this course. All this on a single light. Uh, let me jump to next question. It's good to answer, I mean, it's easy to answer almost any technical question when I have so many courses, right? Uh, what about like a ring jewelry? Uh, how to reflect a gemstone? Uh, Shahin asked. Well, I just need to show you. It's similar technique, uh, similar in terms of you calculate where the light should come from and how to modify that light. Where basically it's the shape of the diffuser, how we need to put that diffuser, how it should be shaped. Is it should be flat diffuser or sometimes you can bend it on all kind of things, and then you work with uh, gemstones. We have courses for this. I, do, I cannot show you everything in this uh, webinar, but on courses it's all covered. OK, uh, then will polarizing filter help with the glass? Uh, Andrew, yes, it, it, it will help with the glass, uh, especially if glass is flat. Uh, don't expect, though, to completely work out the reflection from the glass. Because if you will have the straight, really harsh reflection on the glass, uh, polarizer won't completely eliminate it. If you would use polarizer, circular, polari sorry, circular polarizer filter on the lens, plus polarized light, which I covered on the previous uh, Friday talk, I did a demo. This where you can do a magic. Yes, you can kill any reflection on the glass, and it's, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, but usually, I, I, I rarely use diffuser. Oh, sorry, I rarely use uh, polarized filter when I shoot jewelry. Uh, because almost anything can be done with uh, lighting, you know, proper position of the lighting. OK. Uh, what uh, gem on something smaller than a watch? Same thing. It doesn't matter how small it is. If it would be uh, some knuckles or whatever with gemstones placed on the same surface, I would lit it the same way, and it will be beautiful. Uh, we have actually free uh, free class on the Kikin course. It's free course on 40G. Uh, let me send you a link. Uh, it's completely free course that uh, I show how to shoot. Uh, it's actually some bracelet with tons of uh, chip, but it's crystals anyway. Uh, we show where to, uh, how to shoot this uh, on this course, okay? Oh, come on. So, uh, what lens is the best? Uh, the best lens is macro lens. Macro lens meaning one to one magnification ratio, okay? Uh, which you can have it, I mean, you use it to, to shoot small subjects. And uh, what particular lens, it depends on the brand. I know Canon, I know Sony. Sony is 90 millimeters uh, G lens, 2.8. Beautiful, beautiful lens. You know, the, if you check the tests, uh, those, um, some was tests done on this lens, it's one of the sharpest ever lenses for 65 millimeters camera. And for Canon, it's high, 180 millimeter macro lens. It's the best. I had both. I had 100 millimeters f2.8 L. And I have 180. 180 is just, but it two times it costs two times more than 100 millimeters. And I can't 
uh, say that uh, it's a two times better quality. No. So if you're on a budget, get 100 millimeters Canon uh, L. If not, then not L, whatever, <laughs> it will work. <laughs> you can gain sharpness uh, in post-production, but of course, more money, uh, better lens. Less money, quality is not good. Uh, but 100 millimeters is cool, really cool one. Okay. Uh, is it better to work on black surface to help add contrast as opposed to white surface? Well, you, you need to work on the surface that will match the final, the actual surface on the final image. It's not about contrast. I mean, if you work on white, you still can have beautiful contrast. On black, visually, it appears more contrast. It's more like, you know, more catchy just because it's black and something bright in, to, you know, in the middle. Usually on white, it's harder to get that kind of jumping look. However, you shoot the way that client wants if you're working on the commercial stuff, right? You shoot uh, on white if you need, they need white. Even if you're going to crop it, I mean, clip it out, it should be still white background. Bright, okay, maybe not completely white. If it should be black, it should be black, okay? Okay, thank you, learned much. Uh, do you recommend strobes or flash for beginner studio? Strobe or flash, uh, a live pro studios. Uh, what do you mean, what's the difference between strobe and flash? Sorry, I'm not sure. This is speed light, it's a strobe, it's a flash. And the brown color, it's still strobe, it's a flash. <laughs> so, if you're asking about difference between continuous and strobe, I work with strobe, but I also have continuous light because I start working with uh, video. With continuous light, it's cool. You can shoot videos at the same time, and then you can do um, some other things with continuous light. But you never can freeze action with continuous light. Usually, you cannot freeze action. So for me, strobe, it's a big plus because I can do high-speed stuff. But for beginner studio, this, no, really, you, on that course, Again, it's free lesson there. If you go to starting studio photography course, I talk about equipment. It's free. You can just see what I uh, use there. It's sixty dollars speed light, seventy dollars strip box. Very good strip box. No problem from eBay. Uh, it comes with mount with everything. So seventy plus sixty, hundred thirty dollars for one unit. You have three of those units, and you can do almost anything. Yes, you may need little maybe snoots, maybe a little bit. Honeycomb grids in addition, but with three lights, it's a lot. And it's, it's, it's super cheap, considering that this is, it comes with the salt box. But I mean, it's separate. It's, it's not like a set. Okay. Prokofiev photo, чуть выше, мой вопрос. Let me see, where is it? Did I miss it? Okay, there is a question in Russian, so I'm going to read it and translate, or I'll try to translate it in, in, on the fly. Uh, how how they, do they shoot the sort of straight... Uh, <laughs> how do they shoot uh, watches straight, as I understand? And uh, there is no reflection on the uh, glass from the camera or lens, okay? So, yes, yes, exactly. Uh, yes, sometimes when you shoot, let's say, top-down shot or whatever, and you have that watch or whatever subject with flat, glossy surface, like on a watch, it's a glass on the face, facing directly the camera and no reflection from the camera. But, I mean, there is a catch. Sometimes you can catch the reflection from the camera and lens exactly in the middle of that watch, and it looks good because you just cover your camera, let's say you put a circular ring, black screen on your lens, of course, without covering the lens itself, and it will be a black reflection on the glass, which is good. I mean, sometimes that's exactly what do you need. You need to have transparent glass, so no reflection. This is how you can hide the camera and have it um, just, you know, hidden by uh, the black screen. But if you need a reflection, some nice reflection on the glass facing the camera, yes, usually that's how I do it. I moving, I'm rotating a little bit. I'm rotating subject a little bit. What's cool, if your watch, like this watch, is completely flat, if it's not curved, 
If curved, it's a little bit harder. If it's not curved, half of degree rotation will move the area that reflects on the watch away from the camera if, let's say, imagine, half a degree, very little. But if you have that distance, that degree, I mean, you know that's the amount of, uh, of that movement on, let's say, two feet away or one feet away will be quite significant. It may be like um, 10 inches. It's a half degree. One more half degree and you have completely not a camera, but uh, something next to the camera reflecting on the watch. And then you can place a light or whatever to get some reflection on that watch. If it's flat. If it's not flat, if it's curved, it's a little bit harder, but with curved, it's not the whole camera that reflects. You usually have way more reflection and you can walk just covering yourself with some diffusers <laughs> around the camera. Okay? Uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you, uh, Lucian. What, what's your option about Sigma micro lenses? Well, I, you know, with Sigma, I think Sigma is a beautiful brand, not, not a problem uh, with working with Sigmas. I didn't have much Sigmas. I had my first ever macro lens was a Sigma, I think in 105 millimeters, f2.8. It was about three or four hundred dollars lens, and that time it was the most, my most expensive lens. I got a macro lens, and you know, it was a beautiful lens for portraiture, for everything, yeah, for macro when I start shooting products. But it was good till f13, f11, f16. It was really soft when you start closing it down. It was really soft. F22. Sometimes I can shoot f22 with that lens, with Sony, if needed. Not a problem. I know many of you will say, no, Alex, it's, I don't care if I'm getting the image that I need, okay? For me, it's a tool. I can do whatever I want. I'm free in studio <laughs> from any prejudice, you know? So, with stigma, it was really hard to close aperture down because really it was unrecoverable. Details were just lost. Now, maybe they have way better lenses, uh, macro lenses. I don't know. That's what my experience. After that Sigma, I got uh, Canon 180 millimeters, and it was like, woo. Okay. Uh, Alex, did you ever try studio strobes from Lencarta? No, I'm asking about because Europe. Yes, uh, I, I didn't have them. I, I think we had a review, maybe not Lencarta. What I can tell you, there are so many lighting brand, I mean brands of lighting. Now it's even more than anywhere, anywhere. In the past time it was um, much fewer brands. And the only thing that, I mean, there are two ways to judge, to, to decide on the lighting. F three maybe. So let me cover this and then, I mean, you just go through, through that process. First, you need to think what kind of mount it is. The mount that you put, you know, the lighting should be something um, that widely spread. Like, for example, Bowens. Tons of accessories from different uh, brands, from different um, pri price points. It's beautiful. So it should mount, uh, like Bowens is probably the best mount for non-expensive lenses. Oh, sorry, for non-expensive lighting, because you can exchange it. If there are some really cheap lighting that has some proprietary mount, some whatever, this is not good. Because when you buy in lighting, you buy in in the future, all kind of accessories to it. And if it will be only accessories that can be used on this lighting, it's not a good idea. Yes, Paul Sibov has it. And uh, I mean, has that special thing that only can work for Paul Sibov. But they sell uh, all the, uh, all kind of light modifiers, uh, plus there are uh, adapters, adapters, for example, Bowens to Paul Sibov. So first, you need to make sure that you can mount different uh, light modifiers from different brands. Then look at the reliability. Just look at the forms. I mean, how return policy, policy buff used to, I don't know how, it now, how it's now, but uh, they used to give you, I think, five years uh, warranty. Yeah, I had few failures uh, with policy buff, but I was sending them, and uh, three days later, it was back new. So it was not a problem. Uh, reliability, and uh, the last one is uh, the specification. 
it's really the last one probably because uh, you need to have uh, enough power. Uh, think about a light that has constant color mode because these guys are beautiful but because they're cheap, but speed lights, the problem with speed lights, if you have one speed light at full power and another speed light at half power and third one at one eighth of a power, it will be all different color temperature. One light will be bluish, one little bit yellowish, and if you use them together on the shot, it will be hard to balance. It's not about, you know, gray card because it's just a mixture of different light temperatures. So the strobe should have a constant color temperature. It's very important. Then you may look at the flash duration. Is it, can it uh, run short flash duration if needed? Like Paul Sebaf can do it, you know, burn color, uh, many lights. Uh, that's another thing. But basically, this is how you see. Look at the forums, look at the reliability. Okay. Is light intent any good for shooting jewelry? You want to ask? No. But let me tell you this about light intent. Yeah, I'm start tearing apart. <laughs> I'm sort of very against light intent. But don't get me wrong. Light intent can give you very fast way to shoot specific uh, types of jewelry, specific way, particular way. I would say a particular way you can shoot. It. But it's you stuck there basically. If you want to have to shoot them different way, or if your jewelry is different shape. Let's say you have uh, the how you call it, a pearl, spherical pearl. And you have accidentally, you know, all those uh, from light tent, you have uh, corners that are not as bright as the middle of the sides of the tent uh, reflecting and it's bad. So it's very limiting. And I, I hate the tents. I never, I mean, I tried to use them, throw them away. I can build a tent using just four pieces like this. It's a box. This is my tent if needed. I mean, it's easy to use, do it myself, or any, uh, any kind of diffusers to build sort of light tent if you need it. But you can always detach it. You can always change the angle that uh, some of the panel goes. And you know, it's just way, way better. So light tent is OK, but it's more like it's a very, very special thing for very, very special results. And uh, usually those results are very, um, Usually, there are exceptions, but usually it's very uh, sort of plain results. Something on the white background with all kind of white reflections all around. Yes. But, so I'm not recommending it for learning. Light tent may be good when you need to shoot 100 items. You have very little idea how to do it. You, you are not really a professional photographer yet. And you have this, you know, client. So what to do, what to do? Okay, get a light tent. Put it there, and if they're okay with the quality that will give, uh, that you can produce, go shoot that hundred items, uh, get money, buy something better. So why not? Uh, changing white balance in post-production sometimes gives nice results. Is it recommended? Yes. I mean, you can do whatever you want uh, in in post-production, right? White balance, why not? Uh, sometimes uh, you need to preserve the actual color of your product. But sometimes you shouldn't. It, it may be, yeah, we, we do change. Uh, what, when I shoot, I need to make sure that where is it? Uh, I always shoot a gray card. So I have like a shot with correct white balance if I need to set it. I mean, not me, but uh, our attacher, Jenny. Uh, but other than, than that, then if you look at our jewelry, uh, you will see that um, on some cases we tweaked white balance. Just because we like it fast, it's uh, you know uh, more like a creative process. We not we did we, we didn't shoot uh, catalogs all all that boring stuff. We're not interested in this. Okay. How a professional computer choose how to choose a professional computer? Well, um, on a PC world, it's infinitive. Choices, right? On a Mac, it's easy. I mean, I have Mac, uh, iMac in studio uh, with 32 megabyte memory, giga, mega, no mega, whatever, maximum. Uh, our toucher has Mac Pro, the news, the tower, the trash can, <laughs> uh, with uh, I think it's 64 or something uh, gigabyte memory. Uh, that's, I mean, powerful machine, and it works beautiful. But on PC, do your own build, probably. It should have good graphic. It should have lots of memory. 
for Tetherit, you know, laptop will work okay because Tetherit is not a big deal. Uh, the screen is way more important, I think, when you should Tetherit. Uh, your favorite lens for product shot? Uh, my, mac uh, my, my favorite lens is a macro lens. Any lens that is macro will be my favorite. In this case, it's a uh, Sony 90mm uh, macro lens. Before it was Canon, so I had Canon 180mm macro lens, my favorite. Then uh, it was 100mm macro lens when we started kind of selling Canon. It was the last lens. Okay, guys, uh, that's it. Uh, one hour is passed. Uh, I covered my past due 15 minutes uh, that we started uh, later. So it was a great pleasure talking to you, showing you this stuff. The whole idea why I'm doing this is to show you that, hey, you can do this even with your light, even if you have no light, even if you have something like this and something like this, you can do it. You can start in product in jewelry photography. Yes, results will be maybe frustrating in the beginning. But, well, you have 4G, right? You have 4G community, you have 4G website. We can, you can get any type of uh, tutorial if you need. You can have a forum where I can ask. Facebook group, 4G Facebook group. Tons of great photographers providing uh, uh, advices and help on that group every day. So just be with us if you feel that you want to learn this, if you want to uh, get into that still life photography, very uh, low, slow emotions, but it's different emotions. I mean, you can be very emotion. I mean, you can get lots of emotions shooting products, even more emotions than you shoot people. Look at Dave Nietzsche stuff. He knows how to do it. Uh, great stuff. So, uh, again, nice talking to you. Don't forget about the discount code 0909. It works for any product on 40G, actually including Pro Club. If you want to join for Pro Club, that's where we do assignments when this is an interactive program. Uh, you can join with that discount, and uh, it will give you 25% off on everything. If, you, if there is a course, there is a course actually which is, already, which is already on the sale, it will just double uh, it. So 0909 till end of today, and then uh, we'll good to go. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, I am on Facebook, usually. Subscribe to 40 g channel for sure. Next time, Friday, 1 p.m., I'll be here. Awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Woohoo, guys. Love you. Great weekend. It's a Friday. I almost forgot that this is Friday. <laughs> have fun. Be with family, be, be with your friends. Uh, do something awesome. Don't sit at that freaking TV and watch it. That's no reason to spend your life on this. Go outside. It's beautiful. And the most beautiful thing, do you know what the most beautiful thing? Is a good conversation with an interesting people. This is the best ever. Okay. Bye.